Good morning, everyone. My name is Kara Brennan. I'll introduce myself further in a moment, but I want to say hello on video before I move over to Kara mode and welcome to our presentation on the API for everything continuous computing. So without uh, further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen. All right, so this morning we're going to talk about uh, the API for everything, continuous compute, and really the impact the move to continuous automation on compute and infrastructure. We'll, we'll talk about uh, several subjects, uh, introduce myself a little bit more fully. Um, my name is Terry Brennan. I'm a managing director with ORC Software. Long, long history of being in, in the, uh, the space and good fortune to sort of have worked across the different uh, areas within, within IT, uh, everything from development and architecture into the project program management, into the ops side, uh, driving a lot of the operational aspects of the business, uh, then up to strategy, governance, and architecture, and, and other components within the IT uh, sort of landscape and ecosystem. So I had had good fortune to be able to see a lot of different aspects and like say, be able to connect a lot of those, those dots uh, in, in, in that aspect. So we're gonna talk today about several, several main topics. Uh, the first one, sort of the changing landscape, the idea that it's a revolution, sort of front to back, sort of talk about what that means and how things are changing and what the overall impact is. Talk about the idea of ephemeral and, and how that's changing things uh, changing how you have to, to manage and, and what sort of makes that up and, and our aspects of that. Talk about the idea of shifting left and connecting, um, how that changes things within what we're looking at a lot of times from an infrastructure compute standpoint. And then talk through the idea of continuous compute, which is, you know, what we think is a way to think of managing the infrastructure of tomorrow in a very complex world and a very continuous world. So the changing landscape, the revolution front to back. Uh, the world, world's changing quickly. I think everybody is probably aware or at least sees that in, in one aspect or another in, in our daily jobs and what's being um, required there. If we look at it, there's a couple things that are driving it. You know, one is there's this idea of uh, uh, evolving business needs. The, the business needs are getting much more uh, innovative, they need speed, they need change, they need it to move quickly. Uh, when you look at the agile delivery cycles, uh, those have come into play and they're requiring much faster pace, uh, trying to enable a faster pace of change and, and allow things to move through in, in a more uh, rapid pace, both on those. And that's really accelerating the need for world-class DevOps and world-class really IT value stream um, when we think it at the highest level. It allows us to do things fast, stable, secure, but also to be reliable. And there's a lot that goes into that. So we look at some of the research and, and data behind it. What's the impact of this changing world? If you look at things like the state of the DevOps report, you know, they'll tell you that you know, the top 20% of organization, what they call this elite group um, in here, is really moving many times faster. So the elite performers, are moving many times faster, but they're doing it with higher quality than the low performers. So if we look at some of the, the direct numbers, they're able to deploy over 200 times faster. They've got a lead time from, uh, from commit to deploy, it's over 100 times faster. Their ability to recover is 27, 2,600 times faster. And their, their actual failure rate, so the rate of change failure, is 7% lower. So they're moving at a much faster pace, but they're doing it with a higher level of quality. And that's you know, obviously a very uh, good place to be from a uh, ability to deliver IT value through, through the IT value stream. So if we, we look at what that really means from an outcome, we look at the elite performers and the low performers, and we look at sort of the difference over time, the gap between those elite performers and low performers is growing and accelerating. So this is really expanding and becoming pretty significant. Matter of fact, uh, through their research, it says they're one and a half, over one and a half times more likely to meet or exceed their goals from an or organizational 
performance standpoint. Now, those are things like productivity, profitability. Right? These are larger business goals, but when you're, you're able to move more quickly and deliver IT value, because IT is the IT value stream and being able to move quickly and uh, adapt to business needs is a business differentiator now that is delivering, when we look at the research, a pretty significant uh, difference between those who are getting these practices and doing things like automation, shifting left and, and moving more quickly versus the low performers. So there's a lot of drive to, to make this happen and be able to go through it. So those, those factors are really shifting and changing the IT value stream. Uh, so how IT moves value through this from beginning to end and pulling all the pieces together from the planning and the management, the delivery, uh, the sort of operational, the infrastructure, and all the pieces in between, being able to pull that throughout uh, and through the value stream is changing rapidly for IT because they have to be able to move more quickly. The other thing it's bringing about is this move towards continuous flow, which we're gonna talk about um, several times during, during this talk. Uh, overall continuous flow, if you really think about moving from ideas and things that you're doing all the way into a deployed and operating uh, production unit, moving through this in a continuous fashion is something that most organizations aren't there yet, but that's the ideal of where you're trying to move to. And the way we look at it, I mean, there's certainly if from a DevOps standpoint, your sort of standard pieces that you look at, um, which are you know, continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. Um, and, and those are very important pieces in, in driving and, and putting all those things together. There's a lot of other pieces that need to be put in place to start to truly get towards continuous. And those are things by looking at the front end of the process where you're doing your uh, innovation and planning, by looking at the, the back end of the process. So as it's deployed and it's in production, now it's being transitioned and goes into continuous operations. How do we align all of this so we can set up things like feedback loops and we can be able to effectively manage and stay ahead uh, and deliver the best outcomes for you know, things like our capacity planning, asset management, and things like that. Uh, and then there's a lot of specialized pieces. Uh, the big one we're gonna talk about today is continuous compute, but there's a lot of pieces around continuous improvement, continuous data, continuous testing, continuous security, continuous monitoring that are Offshoots of this, they're, they're things that we've sort of developed to say, okay, from this particular perspective, here's the things that you would need to take into consideration to address moving your compute to more of a continuous footing. Same thing from sort of an oversight standpoint, from everything from the strategy to management and the visibility. It's also driving a DevOps mindset. You know, a lot of the, the research we were quoting earlier was was certainly from from a DevOps have point of view, but overall, if you look at the where many organizations are heading towards, and some have moved very much in that direction, they are really looking at bringing through and connecting and automating and shifting earlier in the process all the pieces that sort of support this pipeline and this value delivery uh, value stream within the IT space from the idea of this vision or, or idea that we have going through delivery teams and then moving through all the different pieces that we need to address to be able to get that into production. And that's, you know, things like build, things like test, things like provisioning and getting uh, infrastructure, especially if you start to move towards uh, things like ephemeral environments, being able to do that all the different levels from the development, you know, QA, UAT, and then into production. And how do you sort of build that loop so this all loops back on itself? Uh, so a dev DevOps mindset, so the cultural aspects of that, the automation aspects of that, the shift left aspects of that are, are really starting to become um, a, a driving factor. And then finally, that's all driving towards an API revolution. Where we were sort of before um, is we were looking at this idea of all these different areas. And if we think of these, as you know, maybe our, you know, our, our DevOps and our DCIM and our ITSM and our Agile development, you know, a lot of times, even and even within these, these may be individual pieces. 
you had a lot of either tools or manual processes or tools that really supported single manual processes, but they were very disconnected. They were manual. People were having to go and sort of address and, and enter that and keep up with that. So it was it was challenging. Well, now is, is a lot of this mindset and a lot of this drive to, to make the cycles faster, to embrace some of the DevOps concepts, to bring these things in and automate. We're now driving all these capabilities towards the idea of actually having systems in place that can support through APIs and connect to the other systems and be able to have that communication sort of on a constant basis. And that helps to provide us the ability to move towards that continuous. There are still manual pieces, there, there will probably be for a long time, but getting the APIs in place, doing things like that we'll talk about here momentarily as, as, it, as code, um, doing automation and moving these things forward are allowing a much faster pace to be done and allowing a lot of consistency and is allowing the teams to focus on other items and sort of move those forward rather than being stuck in doing a lot of the manual pieces back here that we're doing again and again and again. So now we're going to talk about ephemeral. We have all those APIs. We have this ability. We sort of have those big factors, those macro level factors, which are driving us to this faster pace, this need to, to automate, make, move. So let's talk about ephemeral. So the idea of here today, gone tomorrow, very dynamic uh, environment. So the API sort of revolution is, is enabling a lot of that, is really enabling an ephemeral world Whereas, you know, before we had all those disconnected pieces, now we're very much moving towards this idea of fewer manual steps. We're not necessarily uh, putting a lot of pieces where somebody has to go in and, and address it. We're trying to build value streams that allow us to integrate through APIs, through automation, pull these things together, even though in the reality, our world overall is becoming much more complex and more dynamic um, in this ephemeral idea, uh, and certainly much more diverse that we're having to manage across many different types of technologies uh, all at the same time. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit further in a moment. So that really is requiring us, you know, moving toward that ephemeral world to do things like have a much higher level of integration. So, you know, there's lots of tools that start to come into this equation all across the spectrum, and each of those have data and information that may be specialized to that, that set of uh, tool in, in that area, but also that need to be shared and collaborated on across a broad set. And you see, this is just an example of all the different connection points and the places things have to integrate. Um, so to drive a lot of that or support that, that higher level of integration, that's where our APIs are helping us in, in, in many ways, in, in many cases, where it's allowing us to do that more programmatically and, and share that information build uh, you know, workflows and things like that that are able to address and keep these things connected and be able to feed it down the, the cycle so we can actually orchestrate and drive some of these forward. That sort of moves us into the idea of streamlined automation and orchestration. So with able, being able to do that, what we're trying to do is drive from this idea of being uh, big changes and moving these things through in a very sort of piecemeal way where it goes to one point and then stops and it waits and somebody does something and spends some time. And then it goes to the next point and it stops and waits. Uh, and then somebody does something and it goes to the next point and on and on till it finally gets to production where it sits and somebody has to, again, maintain and, and do the continuous operations of that. But all these are very disconnected and that costs a lot of time and money as we're going across this that ideally we would be able to uh, invest in putting it in other areas. So where we're trying to get to is more this idea from this disjointed idea to more this continuous idea where what we're doing is we're working in, in smaller pieces and they're flowing through, but we've now connected a lot of those areas, a lot of those tools, uh, leveraging our APIs and going all the way from idea to uh, deployment to the infrastructure that we have to provision to do that, especially when we're moving in an ephemeral world, and being able to allow that all to happen somewhat seamlessly and quickly moving across that overall spectrum into production, and then being able to keep our eyes on top of that as well. And then we also need continuous verification. So 
you know, when we're moving and we're now moving at a much faster pace, we have a lot of ephemeral pieces. We really need to be able to monitor it. We really be able to look at things like logs and apply analytics so that we can keep a constant vigil, constant eye on what's going on uh, and allow us to have the confidence to be able to do that. Because when things are changing so quickly, there's so many different pieces on so many different platforms, um, it, it can really be challenging especially from an ongoing standpoint and, and keeping it all up and reliable and finding issues and problems when they do occur and be able to address those in a quick standpoint. So beyond that, the availability of these APIs across the value stream. So now, you know, whereas these may have been disconnected, now we do have the ability to integrate a lot of these tools to build some level uh, of automation that can go across this and connect these different pieces. Uh, so all across this value stream, there are now tools and most of them are enabling some level and some set of, of APIs, which we now can talk to and bring information across these, share those, collaborate those, put those in the right order, put those in place so that they can keep an eye on, say our, our systems and our background, our capacity, our, our different assets, keep those up to date but also warn us that there's challenges or problems coming down the pipe. Um, other ideas like infrastructure as code, you know, so when we look at all the APIs here, they're certainly giving us a lot of uh, capabilities and, and the ability to automate. Ideas like infrastructure as code um, and using a lot of these tools that can support that are allowing us now to define even, you know, at an infrastructure level, do things and put them in configurations put that into uh, uh, automation and be able to create these idea of ephemeral environments. So things like infrastructure or code are allowing us to define many different uh, types of infrastructure all the way up to, in, in some cases, clients we see trying to define entire data centers uh, through, through as code type of scenarios. So that, and when you put together that with the growing connections between these silos. So, you know, well, like to say historically, but the reality in, in many cases today, we see the same thing where, you know, your, your, your ITSM, your operations, your DevOps, your, you put agile delivery on here, your DCIM, uh, often are, are, are sort of siloed and, and not necessarily connected. But today that's starting to shift and starting to change. Uh, and that's enabling a shift left. So in talking about shifting left, um, we have the idea of moving on up and connecting. So moving on up in the process. So hopefully enabling things to happen earlier and be able to uh, detect errors or problems or you know, outages as early as possible and then be able to address that. Um, but that requires both moving those forward but also connecting them. So you know, we, we talked a second ago about this, the disconnected silos and in a previous webinar on ITSM and DevOps, and the idea of continuous operations, we talked about very much the, the idea that ITSM and, and DevOps uh, were often perceived or in maybe reality in many organizations as sort of warring alien worlds. Um, they were very much uh, almost at odds, even though the reality is they should really be coming together and, and working more closely because it's the only way we're going to get the speed, the flow through and the cycles that we need to support the business needs of today. So ITSM and DevOps and also DCIM are very much historically been something that may have been disconnected. You know, there's been more work here, but really we need to bring all these things together and we need to more move them to complementary cohorts. Because our, our reality is that these are very much becoming living and breathing things that are changing all the time. Um, so the communication, uh, the collaboration and, and the intersection in what's going on here is very important. And that's why, you know, we're talking about the, the idea of moving these cycle times up, using things like APIs and automation and as code, uh, and then other changes that we'll talk about later from a cultural standpoint to bring these items together so that they can work together effectively in a very complex, very dynamic or ephemeral environment that is having to work uh, at a very high cycle time and with a lot of changes moving through.
and that's driving driving a shift left. So you know those connections and the ability to do that is now en enabling us to connect earlier, to work together earlier, and to be a part of that overall equation. So shifting left, there's multiple areas that we need to start thinking about shifting left. Um, things like operational readiness, and we, we talked about, uh, in, in, again, in, a, in a, another webinar, the idea of continuous transition, this idea that you know, we have to be able to move these efficiently through the process, especially where there's still you know, dev teams and then it's moving over to more of an ongoing operations. How we do that is important, and then moving those and all the operational readiness components on top of that earlier in the equation so that we're able to understand true needs and be able to change, you know, move things like uh, asset management earlier. How are we, how are we tagging, how do we actually manage these? How are we addressing these? How are we uh, managing to this fact that we're living in a very quickly changing world and how do we move that as early in the equation as possible rather than being sort of a, a late in the game one off side. Uh, capacity management, again, how do we get some of those operational readiness, that, that visibility and, and uh, understanding earlier in the process, and how do we leverage all these tools and the APIs and the data that they can provide to sort of drive that process and shift it into an earlier part of, of what we're trying to, to accomplish. And change management, you know, change management's another one of those that Often it, it is seen, you know, if you're looking at it from a more of a traditional world, it, it's uh, you're trying to control. I mean, obviously we're trying to manage the change, but it can very much seen be seen as uh, just a control and be a challenge to fit into some of these faster uh, flows, especially when you're talking about potentially moving changes into production. When you're talking about uh, building and, and acquiring, you know, infrastructure, provisioning infrastructure. Uh, in an ephemeral way and driving those through, uh, even you know, even at some level, uh, driving that through and, and all the way into production and everything that comes with that. So that need for speed is really shifting that. So we have to figure out how we shift some of that earlier, how we connect it into the overall process so that we can have visibility, but also be able to move quickly. And it is a balance that we have to address. And finally, monitoring, it's not the only thing. This is just you know, some of the things that have to shift earlier, but obviously monitoring and being able to both move that in um, so that we have it set up, but also be able to move that in so we can detect errors earlier, so we can connect and have as production of relevant type of environments as we can, as early in the process that we can, so we can uh, detect anything that may come up from infrastructure or monitoring uh, other standpoint, but that ability to move these things and move towards production relevant uh, environments is something we have to think of from a, from a shifting left standpoint. So finally, you know, overall, it is uh, very much uh, in ephemeral and shifting world, and it's complex. You know, if we go back to, you know, sort of where we were before. You know, platform wise you may have had a mainframe and and that was fairly more straightforward if you will and then we went through evolutions to client server and different sets of technologies different sets of uh, you know application pieces we went to web which again changed that up more the idea of soa now we started to introduce cloud and and things like that and microservices and we've extended that and now there's lots of little pieces that are spinning up and spinning down and being deployed and lots of infrastructure that's got to be uh, capable of supporting that, uh, and then you, you put in the idea of seamless. So it's it's definitely a world that has changed and become powerful and flexible. There's a lot of things that you can do, but the challenge is it's a complex and diverse world. Uh, it also is one we still have all of them. Uh, so you know the reality is, even though we've changed some of those platforms, it it's tended to be additive. So we still have sort of everything that was in play in the beginning. And we're still having to manage those across a, a, a hybrid world, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later on um, in the continuous testing side. But it's a very uh, complex world. It's a hybrid world that we're having to manage and tie together all of our tools. And again, be able to instrument, and automate, and use things like APIs to be able to make sure those things are collaborating and staying in sync.
So that's really requiring an evolution in the ops and the infrastructure uh, equation. So where are they having to go? So overall, they're having to move from more of a, a rigid, you know, where, where I could define these things, they were fairly separate, they may have been done on an annual, you're sort of a, a separate from the overall cycle, uh, you know, standpoint, something that's very lean and very agile, has to adapt to this ever-changing world, has to adapt to these idea of ephemeral and being able to provision and, and then figure out how that changes, uh, those changes can be securely, efficiently, robustly and reliably deployed and managed with it within the environments. You have to go from disconnected to connected. You know, again, a lot, a lot of times, you know, the, the, it may have felt like they were entirely separate group and, and off to the side, but nowadays it's very important to be a part of that team because being able to move and, and manage to these solutions and work in more of a continuous compute world, uh, it's not going to be uh, very likely that can succeed with being totally isolated, being disconnected from the rest of it, because it's constantly changing. You have to be sort of a part of that and understand that. Um, from a constraint to an enabler, you know, sometimes, you know, things just took a while. It took a while to get components we needed and, and things would uh, take a, a while. And, and now customers are asking for different types of uh, infrastructure and, and platforms that they need to deploy on. And they're asking for things in minutes, um, in many cases, rather than weeks. And that's where we're generally moving, um, but it's something we definitely have to, to keep to move towards and become an enabler. Um, and it's changing from a dedicated world to a hybrid world. We've talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, it's certainly not all typically on-prem anymore. I mean, there certainly are some, some you know, cases where that may, may be, but you know, most people are either at some level or already moved pieces over to the cloud and often there's a bunch of sort of in-betweens uh, that may exist out here uh, in the world that they're having to support. And again, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit in, 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 a, in a bit. But moving and being able to understand how to manage in that hybrid world is uh, very important. And as we talked about before, the, the movement from static to dynamic, uh, the ability to, to have ephemeral environments, especially when you start to talk about in some of the development cases where you may be cycling through and, and running things, um, you know, for fit to purpose. And we've had clients, we, we had one where they were going, they had static environments um, and in where they needed to get to, they were a product company and they needed to get a much higher velocity, much higher rate of change and, and flow through. Um, this is down in the development level. They wanted the ability to actually spin up uh, entire ecosystems of infrastructure is a fairly complex application with a lot of different pieces, uh, a lot of different infrastructure that needed to be done. Um, and, and that was done. We, we, we worked to help them build the ability to be ephemeral where, you know, through automation, through as code, um, through defining these pieces, they could be stood up, the whole environment, everything could be built and deployed. And then we actually built test environments as well uh, ran the test, executed those tests, and could come back and give them, you know, sort of a, a red green. Um, that was only one use case. You know, they could do a lot of different types of tests. There were a lot of different uses that they could do that. Um, but it definitely moved them and allowed them to now move in parallel on a lot of different avenues, and also not necessarily to have competition um, within some of these lower environments. But there was, you know, a, a significant effort to be able to get there but certainly being able to work in parallel um, and move these things through this type of environment was useful. So a lot of that is that move to be able to support the, these ephemeral environments. So continuous compute. So we're in, now talk about sort of the infrastructure of tomorrow. Um, and this is where there's, we, what we've done is sort of put together ideas to think about. So, you know, a world we know that the rate of speed is, is accelerating the need to change is accelerating the expectations of the business. Uh, they're accelerating the speed at which development changes are moving through are both accelerating and getting more complex. Um, we, we put together this idea of continuous compute that says this is not everything you have to take into consideration, but if you're moving, trying to support those ideas, the, the ephemeral, the shifting left, 
here's some of the things that you sort of have to start to think about and take into consideration. And you're not going to do them all and you're not going to do them all right away uh, because there are a lot of different elements that come into play. A lot of times it's a journey. It's something that does take some time. Um, but when you're looking at it, we look at it through the idea of automation and integration. Um, you know, how do we take all these pieces? And we'll talk about each of these in, in some detail. Um, but how do, you, how do you take all those pieces we've been talking about, that, that collaboration, and now truly put together an IT value stream uh, that can support that, you know, pipeline that can support it. The idea of as code, so a big enabler of this, especially when you start thinking about it from an infrastructure standpoint, is being able to define these consistently. Um, and, you know, things like IAC give you the ability to do that as code at a lot of different levels. Um, you can apply things like configuration management to be able to keep them consistent, especially if you have a large, you know, large uh, base of servers you're trying to manage to. So there's a lot of things that you can do from that standpoint that allows those to be uh, built consistently, kept consistent, know what good looks like and, and limit uh, some of those uh, challenges that come up from that standpoint. We'll talk about that a little bit further. Ephemeral environments, we'll, we'll talk about in particular the build of those. This idea of hybrid cloud management or, or you know, hybrid digital infrastructure management. The idea of continuous operations, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit further. Um, continuous verification. And finally, the shifting left. So those process pieces in building these and moving these things into that, uh, up the, the, the process. And then really sort of wrapping around all of this is this culture and aligning the people and organizations. Um, you know, when we were, we were talking before, you know, we sort of had our, our three separate sort of silos or bubbles. Um, and, and that's been reality, you know, oftentimes for, for a long time, where they're, 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 anything that was happening between it was more of a handoff. It wasn't a constant communication. It wasn't this uh, sort of new collaborative integrated way of, of, of working. So when we start to change and, and modify how that is, there's, there's often a, a pretty significant uh, organizational change part of that that's occurring. That there's an adjustment within this the, the organization that we have to figure out how to manage and how to make sure everybody's comfortable with, they understand, and, and they can sort of uh, get behind, if you will. So there's a lot that goes through this process um, that has to be addressed in not just how you bring these things together, but as you do, what are some of the cultural implications and changes that may need to be addressed as well? So talking through those individually, the first one is you know automation integration. We've talked about this through a, a good part of a, a conversation um, where APIs are enabling a lot of this. You know APIs and the ability to connect the separate tools, the separate processes um, across the overall value chain is, you know, very important. And it, it's one of the key ways that you're going to be able to drive uh, and bring together all these disparate areas. And there's tools that can help do that, certainly, but there's there's lots of tools that sort of go across that have to be brought together. There's a lot of different pieces we have to look at. So there's a lot of things you have to integrate within your overall tool chain. But there's also a lot of things you have to integrate within your overall process and life cycle as well. Um, and this is, you know, in particular true once you move into sort of that continuous operation side and how you sort of feed these things back. So APIs in, in, uh, have allowed things like the integration, the automation to help drive these forward. And as you're trying to move towards continuous compute, this is going to be a key area you've got to understand how you can do it, what you can move forward. Um, and, and often you're probably going to do that in steps. Again, it's not going to be all sort of at the same time, but you're going to have to break it into steps that you're going to accomplish over time, both on how you integrate your process, how you automate and integrate your tooling uh, to be able to move these things forward. Um, but if you start looking at these and thinking about that and tackling it in, in a, with a reasonable roadmap, you can start to make a lot of progress and really start to enable uh, faster flow through. You're not going to get to continuous right away, but faster flow through and allow um, the team to focus on higher, higher value added items that they can then drive and, and build things that 
that help keep the overall value stream moving effectively and efficiently. Another area we think is critically important um, when you're thinking of continuous compute and, and driving out uh, the ability to connect the silos, but also to, to drive, especially when you talk about driving things like ephemeral environments, is defining these things as code. And there's a lot of different layers you can do that. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. Uh, there's a lot of different things you have to look at, especially when you start to think of containers and some of those things that are coming into play. It adds yet another layer of, of if you will, complication and, and complexity that we've got to manage to, uh, because we're still dealing with and managing to individual servers and you know how do you keep those? Are you doing something like CM with you know a tool like you know Chef or, or Puppet? Um, you know, are you doing something like getting you know golden images with things like Packer? Are you defining it maybe at, at a higher level? Um, you know, within some of your cloud space with something like Terraform and even beyond with your virtual. Are you using uh, starting to move into containers and having to take that into a, a equation or account. But when you start looking at these items and you're, you're using uh, all these different levels of infrastructure and you want to move this to the ability to, to make it ephemeral to move quickly, you have to have a way to define it because um, you want to keep it consistent, um, whether you're just deploying it and, and um, building and provisioning it so it's consistent or if you're you know, keeping it consistent over time with some of your CM tools uh, and tool as well. But either way you go, defining these as code uh, and treating them more, you know, a lot of times you'll hear people talk about the idea of treating them rather than pets, treating them as, as cattle, things that are defined that you can spin up quickly and you're not as tightly tied to because they're, they're not here real long. They're not something you get endeared to um, certainly doing it as code is a big part of, of making that so and enabling that to, to occur. And it's a big part of driving to a continuous compute footing. Um, ephemeral environments. So again, it's another area we've talked a, a tremendous amount about um, and the ability to combine the uh, infrastructure as code along with the automation so that now, rather than having static environments, I'm able to provision and uh, execute environments, uh, provision and, and execute environments that may have different purposes. Um, I can do them in instances, but they can be spun up very quickly. Uh, you know, the, the example I was talking about earlier was, you know, setting up a fairly complex set of infrastructure, but it only took 20 minutes roughly to pull all those pieces together and, and put that up and get that operational from scratch. And they could do that, you know, I guess it was unlimited I and mean, they, they would, you know, there's, it would take up more and more compute, but you could really scale this very quickly because you can create the same instances in a consistent way. You could do it fairly quickly and multiple people could be doing this. So you may have different purposes, you know, some that may be development oriented, some that may be test oriented, um, even some that may be production oriented, um, but you're able to do this and do it consistently, know that it's secure, know that it's to the right uh, standards that you've defined and that it's gonna be done, done the same every time. And then if you need to, you, know, you can recycle, uh, which especially with your lower environments um, can be very, very useful. So, you know, ephemeral environments is another one as you're trying to move towards this idea of continuous compute, figuring out how to put these elements together, leverage these tools and build the idea of ephemeral environments it is very important to think about and sort of um, figure your path forward, even if you're not going to get there right away. We talk about the, the hybrid cloud management or, uh, you know, hybrid digital infrastructure management, but the reality in, in today's world we have a little bit of everything, you know, many companies have not only, you know, sort of bare metal and the virtual uh, sort of data center assets that they're, they're managing, but there's a growing cloud uh, presence as well. And many times, you know, we've got clients that are working literally in every one of these stacks and they're doing it a bare metal. They're doing it a virtualized world. They're doing it a container world. They're doing it with lots of different pieces like VMware, VMware you know, the different cloud platforms. So 
having and putting in place the ability to manage with this environment is a, a critically important aspect of staying on top of that and then being able to build the supporting pieces that we talked about with as code to keep consistency, the idea of ephemeral and, and automation for how you leverage these, uh, and then be able to get eyes and be able to manage this complex world and stay on top of it, especially when you start talking about asset and capacity and change and the rest of the pieces we have to sort of manage to, when we may need to expand and, and uh, always be changing and modifying what our capabilities are is again, another key aspect of what we have to sort of address and work through from that standpoint. And certainly a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the solutions are allowing us to move and manage within that world much more effectively, um, but it's a skill and, and a capability that needs to be built and integrated because like, like the rest of them, you know, all of these tools are providing you know, APIs that allow us to get a better a hold on the overall picture and to manage that more actively. So another aspect that we, we talk about is, is continuous operations, which I, I mentioned earlier, but this is, you know, to get to continuous compute, how are you going to integrate that into your operations? How is that going to align um, is very important, especially when you start to think about things like how does it integrate into my service management, my, my ITSM, my DCIM, and, and how do I do that? How do I drive things like building collaboration and allowing that to occur? How do I do keep that automation? It's just as important from that perspective, uh, from the ongoing operational aspects. How do I drive that automation into all aspects and keep those going? How do I set that feedback loop? You know, we, we talked about once these things go out into to production, um, you, you now have to have that ability to continuous monitor, but you have to have that ability to then loop that back. And that's where we sort of address you know, some of this is building those, those loop back, building those feedback cycles to allow that to occur. Um, pipeline integration. So again, pulling those pieces together so that this overall value stream um, that the pipeline supports is connected and work is, is another key piece. Uh, and then we talked about, well, we're gonna talk about continuous verification here in a moment. And then finally, those, those agile practices. We talked about one of the ways that uh, operations and infrastructure uh, in the future and already changing is to be more lean, to be more agile. So applying some of that to, to this is, is very useful. And we found, you know, in particular, when we're going in with clients and, you know, they. They may have been doing agile on the development side uh, for a while, but as we go in on the operational side and the infrastructure side and we're executing some projects there, sometimes it's a, a, a newer practice that, that needs to be established because there's not, there hasn't been that same um, exposure and, and emphasis on it. So getting those aligned and being able to gain some of the advantages of being able to work in, in an agile way uh, can really bring a lot of benefit uh, from a continuous operation standpoint. So, you know, driving towards that continuous compute, again, you're never gonna address these all at once, but moving towards that continuous operation and figuring out how I manage that compute as it's both flowing through, and then as these things are on in an ongoing um, configuration is, is very important. And then continuous verification. So, you know, we, we talked about earlier that as, as these things are, are moving and we have the idea of changes moving through potentially extremely rapidly, potentially all the way through, including a production deploy with little to, to no manual intervention, even though that's, that's, a, a long, that's a long way down the road for, for most folks. But we have, you know, we have clients who are either there, at least in some areas, or certainly trying to get there, um, then the idea of moving towards continuous verification and moving that earlier in process, as we talked earlier, shifting that left uh, becomes very important. And being able to tie all of the, the ability to monitor really across the value stream and the, the, all of the IT ecosystem uh, is, is important. So being able to, to, to take our system monitoring 
apply it across. And, and yes, obviously we have to watch our own systems internally, but now it gets comp more complicated because you start to add on things like cloud. Um, how do you how do you stay on top of that? And now you start adding containers, Kubernetes. Uh, there's a lot of things that have to be taken into account when you want to move towards a continuous footing or a continuous compute footing and be able to do that. Same thing with logs. You know, being able to have this information uh, is critical. Being able to take those, consolidate those, and make use of those is it, it, something that we have to sort of strive to and move towards applying the analytics, right? Being able to get the information that can give us the ability to leverage what's coming out, ideally of these tools, which we can have APIs that we can pull into, but we can pull these things in and aggregate and do a lot of it in an automated fashion, be able to pull these things together uh, and keep an eye on both as things are progressing through, because again, this, this shouldn't just be, this isn't about just what's happening on prod, right? So the, the idea here is to move these things earlier all the way down into our dev and testing standpoint uh, and the other cycles in between so that we can both have monitoring and it's useful to do things, especially if you're doing things like performance tests and, and other things of that nature, but being able to get those monitoring and that production relevant, production realistic uh, atmosphere, whether it's the infrastructure, the environments that I'm using here, being again as production realistic as we can. Obviously, there's some challenges with scale in, in cases, but also on the monitoring side of the equation and, and the overall verification. Um, also, things like data and you know, when I'm, I'm executing my test, how do I get production relevancy um, so that even when I'm earlier in the process, I'm testing my overall ecosystem so that I know when I get here into production, all of this, the app, the monitoring, uh, variations in data, the environment configuration, all of these have been tested uh, time and time again, deployed time and then time again. And you know, my deployment that's happening here, ideally we're deploying the same things in the same ways. It's just maybe a matter of scale and, and environment uh, variables, but you know, building to this is something that uh, really is useful to, to get from a relevancy standpoint. One of the big pieces of that is continuous verification. And finally, we talked about the, the shifting left. And a lot of times, especially when you're talking about the, the infrastructure and, and the operation side of the equation, um, it, it seems like those are often events. They're, they're not informed or included until way late in the game. And a lot of times it's a surprise and you've got to scramble around to figure out how to get things either up and running or to take things over. And it's, it's more like an event. Um, and a lot of times when we didn't get the invite till, till very late. Um, as we've moved forward, we've definitely started to, in, in many cases, make that more of a process, which is, which is good. Um, it certainly helps us shift things left and move earlier in, in, uh, in the equation, be able to address a lot of the operational needs, the, the infrastructure needs earlier, understand things like capacity and, and other you know, assets and things we have to address uh, so that we can work that into a minimal process. But really what we're talking about is moving beyond that and building that process into the larger component and connecting these things in a continuous way. Uh, you know, when we're talking about continuous compute so that we have the ability to do this on an ongoing basis and it's always a part of sort of the equation we're, we're driving out and driving forward. So a big part of that is looking at the, the, the overall process, looking at that life cycle and figuring out how to move those components, you know, to the left, shift things, you know, like our operational requirements, our learning, our resource engagement, capacity, provisioning, asset manager, all these pieces, figuring out the best way to move those as earlier in the process as we can. I um, mean, the engagement, how do we engage more? How do we become again, connected, a connected part of that team rather than being siloed over and, and getting requests um, that there's very little info, information or visibility to. So driving that shift left. All of these items that we've talked about um, have really, it's, it's a big change. And like I mentioned earlier, it's not something you're gonna do overnight. It's something that takes time. You know, normally, you know, we work with clients who are, who are coming in and really setting up a 
a strategy. You know, we may be just coming in to help them implement particular pieces, but oftentimes they're either asking us to review and recalibrate a strategy or maybe build a strategy from the ground up um, for how you start to move forward into sort of the continuous world. And those roadmaps are, you know, those, those, those take time. It's not, okay, next month you're going to have all this done. Those things have to be laid out because, you know, when you, you take the fact that everybody has day jobs, and those day jobs are probably day and a half jobs instead of day jobs. Uh, there, there's there's not a lot of time. So how do you actually parse these up in a way that you can digest it and that you can execute it? So you know, part and parcel with that is, is a, a changing culture. Um, when you're connecting these different organizations, you're building that collaborative structure. You're building the connective tissue uh, that's needed and comes with that. And you're changing the the way people work. You're changing things like how I, I do change management, you're changing, you know, how the infrastructure maybe is is being created and, and how we're managing it and how it ties in to the overall equation. There's a lot of cultural aspects to, you know, how you collaborate, you know, building trust, you know, so that, uh, let me get that in over here, you know, how we collaborate, building the trust so that, you know, we, we can, can work with each other in a very open and transparent way. Uh, being able to experiment, especially as we're building some of these capabilities, you know, it's it's not always going to be right the first time. We we do have to sort of iterate on it and evolve it. So so we've got to have uh, the the ability and, and the if you will the safety to be able to experiment and try different things. We have to be able to embrace change um, and then be able to to build into it and and build the the capabilities to to manage change effectively. Uh, the ability to, to be open to innovation, open to different ways of looking at things, working with true transparency and, and being empowered to, to apply these. And, and that's what continuous compute or really an overall drive to more continuous type of capabilities brings about. And it's not something that uh, is necessarily easy. Uh, it's definitely something that as you move towards continuous compute and you're, you're thinking about these, these uh, advanced concepts, it will help taking these into account so as you make those changes, you get the value um, and everybody's able to move along and be a part of that. And then finally, you know, aligning the, the people in the organization. A lot of times, it, you know, when you're shifting things left and you're changing activities, you're changing the way we collaborate. There's lots of different ways to hook those things together. But looking at the organization and understanding what these changes imply and mean for the organization is a critical aspect of, of being able to get this successfully done. Um, you know, sometimes that may be that you're embedded in teams earlier. Sometimes it may be that different groups are working together. Uh, sometimes it may mean that uh, the way the process has changed to, to bring in and collaborate um, is, is modified and different. But understanding both, we've got a view, which is the, the patterns and the, the anti-patterns if you will, for how these things can, can be done. Um, there's a lot of a lot of challenging ways that when, when they're done can result in, in unfortunate outcomes. Um, so, but but the, that's sort of the final piece when with looking at continuous compute overall. Um, so in summary, we talked about, you know, there's an API for everything, this, this application and the meaning of uh, the API uh, revolution, if you will, across the the value IT value stream, allowing us and leading us towards and certainly supporting us in driving to continuous compute. So we talked about that changing landscape. We talked about that acceler accelerating business innovation, the accelerating uh, life cycles. We talked about that changing value stream and the impact on you know, DevOps, ITSM, DCIM, and, and beyond, you know, the agile uh, development in, in those sides. We talked about how that starts to move into an ephemeral way. You know, this idea of here, here today, gone tomorrow, an ever-changing sort of environment, uh, an infrastructure world, and the implications for that. And so managing that dynamic world, dealing with things like automation, integration, as code, and APIs. We talked about trying to shift, shift these things left and, and connect. Um, things like moving our operational readiness, assets, capacity, change, and monitoring. And then finally, we've been talking about the, the continuous compute and you know the, the pieces around that. Which again, this is not everything that could ever you know could happen in there, but they're the key areas that if you think of, will give you a good framework to work within. 
And that's looking at automation and integration. That's looking at you know things like as code uh, and, and being able to define these things in a way that can be called through APIs and automation um, and executed to build things like ephemeral environments or you know automated test cases or automated uh, deployments and automated builds, uh, really connecting all of those pieces. In our particular case, when we're talking about continuous compute, obviously we're looking at some of the things like defining um, your, your infrastructure as code and be able to take care of that and leverage that from you know, server definitions, uh, you know, containers to entire uh, data centers. We've had clients that are really going towards this idea of building everything as code, all the different pieces, the load balancers, building all of that in so that at least in theory, you could stand, stand up data centers from, from scratch. Uh, ephemeral environments, this idea of be it building the, the capability to leverage the automation, the infrastructure as code, to be able to, to deploy or deploy these, provision, deploy these, uh, so they can be used for fit purpose and then recycled um, or kept around for you know a duration of period. But that ability to do that in a very dynamic way. And then hybrid cloud management or you know, the idea of hybrid digital infrastructure, infrastructure management, uh, the ability to manage and sort of take care of a very complex uh, environment and complex world. We talked about continuous operations, which is really pulling all these things together um, that as they move into operations, it connects sort of that overall pipeline with the ongoing uh, IT value stream. The importance of being able to verify those things early and often and continuously. And then finally, on, on the, the central points, the shift left, the, the looking at those processes and moving those as early as possible uh, so that they can be uh, included in and, and hopefully cut down on defects, delays, and blockages. And then overall, the cultural change that all of this implies and the alignment of people and organizations that uh, come into play. I know we only have a couple minutes. I'm trying to look, see if there's some questions. And I'll only try to see if I can answer them then. And what I may do is take these and answer them more fully offline since we only have a couple minutes. We'll see if I can get to any of these right away. One of the questions is DCIM, your shorthand uh, to include all deployment architectures, hybrid and, and multi-cloud. Uh, so, you know, I, I would say that the overall, the, the hybrid digital uh, infrastructure management is, is more what I'm, I'm talking about for, you know, managing the whole piece. And that's where you know, I think a lot of DCIM has sort of uh, evolved to and, and, you know, is driving to supporting those type of, type of capabilities. So, it probably it depends a little bit on your, your definition of or your interpretation of DCIM and how broadly you're looking at that. But I think the the overall that's a piece of it and it's a big piece of the activities that you do. But probably the the broader shorthand, which is managing that overall uh, hybrid, you know, on-prem, virtualized, cloud, you know, public and private, uh, potentially multi-cloud. That's where where I'm talking about more hybrid digital infrastructure management, hybrid cloud management. Um, yes, I will will slide, I will uh, share these so I can, I think I can make those available on the site. Um, and I will also try to answer these questions. I know we are right up on the time. So that was another question is will you slide, share these slides? I'd be glad to, to share that. And also this whole, the whole uh, presentation will, um, webinar will be available as well. So there's a couple more questions, but I know we're right up on uh, noon. So I will take these questions and I will uh, try to send out something so that everybody can answer those for everybody. I appreciate uh, your time and I just wanna make sure I take a snapshot of those before. I, end. I appreciate your time today. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to talking being able to talk to you again in the future so i'm going to take a snapshot of these questions to make sure i have it on hand and then i will end the presentation thanks everybody have a good day